Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cloud Show. This is the show where we talk to cloud leaders or leaders of, of all kinds uh, about things that cloud people should know, people that are running projects in cloud and then whatever they need to understand of, about the world around them. So some of our topics will be definitely technical, and, uh, and that's cool. But also some of our topics will be uh, of another nature, things that are adjacent to technology, but still very, very important for people who are running cloud projects. And as always, we have a guest with us today. And uh, this time it's going to be a guest that will talk to us about storytelling. And it's going to be really, really interesting to see how storytelling relates to cloud leadership. So I'd like to welcome our guest for this show, for this episode. It's Miri Rodriguez. Welcome. Hey, Magnus. I know I'm passionately late. So uh, you weren't late. I was late. Just saying to all your audiences. Uh, but you know what? That's okay. It's okay to make an entrance once in a while. <laughs> Absolutely. No <laughs> problem. You? So uh, where are you now? Are you over in Florida? I'm in Florida now for uh, like a week. I've been, you know, traveling all over the place. But yes, I'm, I'm in Florida this week. Okay, Where are really? you these days? So, Where are you these days? This, this is the, the, the studio, the home office. <laughs> okay. In a bit, I haven't seen you in a while. Last time we connected, we were in Seattle. Oh, yeah, I know. It's been, it's been ages, unfortunately, um, uh, COVID things, right? But now we're oh, starting yeah. to travel again. I hope I get to see you soon. Me too. Me too. I miss you. Yeah, definitely. So let's let's get into it. Let's get into the meat of this because okay. um, you're all about storytelling. You're you're a brand storytelling to be specific, right? You're a brand storyteller and you work for Microsoft. Right. Yeah. And so you tell stories about brands, and uh, we know how important this is um, mm -hmm. in today's market and and so forth to tell your story. Yeah. Um, now, I'd like to know. Uh, if I'm if I'm running a company that that is doing a cloud thing, we're we're going towards the cloud, we're doing cloudy things, and yeah. we have a mission statement or a strategy, things that we are about to do with the cloud. Yeah. Um, why is it important to tell the the brand story about what we are doing um, in in this context? Yeah, great great question, Magnus. So all of us, you know, companies big and small are entering this phase of cloud transformation, modernize, mo modernizing operations and all of it. And wherever you are in that journey, the journey is happening. Why is it important to tell the story of the journey? Many reasons, but the main one as a brand, as a company, as an organization, that transformation you're going through, the communication that happens, the storyline, uh, that journey you're living through and the many changes that are coming across that the verticals, the employees, the stakeholders, if they're not informed in a way that your brand and your brand mission is delivered, uh, there could be disparity in that process. And so a lot of people will be misinformed. It will not be communicated the right way. The mission will not land at the best way. So a brand story has the ability. It's not marketing. Uh, it's not sales. But it encompasses all of it at the leadership level. It is the tool. Uh, that you can use to really enable information, uh, cast vision, inspiration, uh, and all the insights about what is happening in this transformation process. You know, at Microsoft, when I started, I actually started when it used to be Microsoft IT, uh, IT Showcase, actually, and the stories we were telling back then were about that digital transformation where Microsoft was taking the on-premises data to the cloud. The bumps, the bruises, the operationalizing of the cloud, those were all stories that, you know, initially were, of course, devs and, and engineers, cloud engineers or operational engineers, uh, they this was new to them. They were not, they, they had never been a cloud engineer before, right? So that not only is the organization changing, the jobs are changing, the engineers are changing. And that is the transformation that needs to be told, that story needs to be told to keep everyone informed in the journey and whoever's being impacted by that journey, including your customers. Yeah, 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 totally. I, I get that because, because I, and I love, by the way, I have your book. We're going to put a show note with your book. By okay. <laughs> Wait, so have you read the book? <laughs> Oh man, I, I should I should have had it here to hold up. That's my bad. We'll, we'll... You like <laughs> no, but I do have the book. But and and it's about brand storytelling. And and so yeah. when 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 there needs to be, and I I don't know that I'm not necessarily using all the right words in brand story storytelling. But there needs to be some sort of a vision, uh, where you're going with things, and and why you're going there, and why it matters. Okay. Um, now, 
what what I see a lot uh, mm -hmm. is the challenge where this takes um, you know there there are some people deciding on a on a strategy. This is yeah. what we're going to do, and this is what's going to happen, and this is why we're going to do it. Hopefully, they have a, a clue why. Okay. Unfortunately, I see quite often that they're they're doing cloud things because technology. This, mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not a real that's not a real reason. It's just no. um, and and they they're not they're unclear of that. But if they do have some sort of a statement, this is why we're doing it. We're going to get uh, you know global market share or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um, then then th there's always like. It, it falls to the floor and it doesn't connect with the people who will execute. It doesn't connect through the company to the people who are actually driving technology change, the, the technical people, right? Mm -hmm. and so there's, right. There's, a, there's, a, there's a real challenge there. Um, and, and so I think this with brand storytelling is a mm -hmm. way to, to help, help tell that story and bridge. Why are we doing this? It is the way, not a way. It is the way. I am a proponent of that. And I'll tell you why. Everybody has a different why in the verticals. When you ask an engineer in a company why, why we're modernizing, they're going to give you a different answer. Everybody is in their own space. So, Mary, being, being live is awesome. And uh, we're currently live in your. Audio is a little choppy there. I'm sorry. Let's see. Are you with me? Okay. <laughs> I'm here. I love being live. Am I back? I love being live. So your audio came across a little bit choppy there. Are you with me now? Okay. I'm here. Okay, good, good. So yeah, I, there's, a, there's, a bit of, there's a bit of lag, unfortunately, but that's okay. We're live, no worries. Um, so you can you can maybe start over on that and see if we catch it on the second round here. Okay, okay. But can you hear me okay? I'm good now? Sure. Okay, great. So what I'm saying is that brand storytelling is actually the way um, to really get that why across the verticals. In a company, you will have, you know, if you ask an engineer why we're modernizing, why we're on our way to the cloud, and you ask a finance person, you ask a salesperson, you ask a marketing person, they're all going to give you different answers. We all have a different why. Uh, and so brand story can, uh, can unify that messaging internally and externally. Actually, it does do that. Um, and it enables you to cast the vision of not only, hey, because we have to, because the world's going there, but because for us as in this company, it means this to us and it means this to our customers. And that messaging translates back to your customer. Uh, it can actually be disseminated uh, in different ways throughout the vertical, but in the end, it goes back to that core why that everybody shares from the brand story. And that is the difference. That is that, that's the blueprint of your why, of your modernization. Yep, yep. That that makes a lot of sense, and and that really um, connects with me as well because I've seen so many times that technical people are kind of doing technical things with the cloud because they were told to. They don't sure. exactly know what the directionality is. Why are we doing this? Is it because mm -hmm. we want to get more customers? Is it because we want we have to save money? That sounds that's sad, but that's sometimes true. Or is yeah. it because we have to be you know, technically compliant, but why do we have to be that? And why why does that matter to us, right? Um, so so they Absolutely. don't know why, and they're just doing technical things. Um, and and it's not a, no, it's not for certain that we're actually following a plan. We don't know. We, we're just different people are doing different things. Yeah, and let's talk about that. Let's talk about the leadership of that yeah. because with the trust there, when you have technical people, a lot of you may be here in your audience that are technical people you actually have the conviction of the why. Security, for example, is a huge thing. Uh, and But to translate that from a technical standpoint to a customer who you have to say, hey, you've got to pay a little bit more now for your subscription because we're going to add this, you know, have this add-on for your security. They don't get that. And so you see it and you see the value from a technical perspective because of the technology that it takes and the, you know, the power that it takes to deliver that, to enable yep. that security, but the customer is only seeing an increased amount, uh, right, on their subscription, their monthly or annual ICR. So this is the kind of thing that um, a story can help delve through, can actually, a good story will clarify that, 
will inspire change, will, you know, will, influ will influence that, that change, will bring people with you into the journey. Because not only do they understand your why, they know how your why impacts them. And that's, that is the organization's responsibility to deliver that. We're making these changes because, and this is how it impacts you, here's where we are in that journey, here's how long it's going to take us. Uh, and let's also know that all of us who've been in this uh, modernization, you know, journey to the cloud idea, you know, we start with this aspirational, you know, goal. It doesn't look like that at all. You know, it's not linear. So there's bumps and bruises along the way. And that is the vulnerability of the brand. It doesn't make you weak as a brand, as a company. It makes you human. And so it humanizes the organization and the people working behind to make this happen. Oh, wow. I love that. That's it. It, it becomes so clear and it sounds so simple when you tell it, um, mm -hmm. of course, but but I, I wish that everybody did that. And, and I know that that we are not doing that nearly well enough uh, in, the, in this industry. And so I guess you have you have a lot uh, still to do. Yes. Um, but I'd like to talk about a, a different I'd like to change to a different thing here, because I, I know that you have coined a, a term. You've coined the, the term encode empathy into yes. your stories and so mm -hmm. what does that mean specifically and and what does it also mean if you're a tech leader to yes. encode empathy yeah and you know it's funny it is actually not disassociated from what we we're just talking about it's actually not a different topic it's exactly the the build on what we were just talking about the foundational right. idea of humanizing our brand and our company and what happens to those engineers and the work that they're doing so as a tech person you know i do a lot of stories in the tech field i'm not an engineer but I speak tech, you know, and I've been working with engineers for a long time, especially cloud engineers as well. And so, because that's that's where I started. And so, when I when I have conversations with them, uh, there is this uh, I don't want to call it break, but there is this uh, distance between the the message that they want to deliver, and they're so passionate. You're you're also passionate about the work that you do and your why you have it, and then how that translates to the common folk who don't get it, right? And so encoding empathy in your in your stories is it's it's the delivery of that message and you understanding that while it makes a lot of sense in your technical mind, it does not translate to your the people that you want to deliver this. As a tech leader, you're pitching this, these ideas and you're pitching these changes to exec leadership, uh, lead, you know, your customers, uh, whoever, I mean whoever your audience may be. So pausing a little bit and understanding how you going a little further to to empathize with that audience helps you. How do you empathize? There are three levels of empathy. I'm not going to go through all of them today, but the, the one, the higher level is this idea uh, that at the core, it's called cognitive, cognitive empathy. And at the core cognitive level is this idea that are at the brain level, we're all human. And so if you can remember that your audience is human and there's a humanity aspect to all of us going through the same anxieties about the cloud, but we may not be experiencing it the same, you can actually empathize with your audience. Let's say you're speaking to a salesperson. They don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. They're salespeople. They don't get it. Then you're already building that wall. But if you come in with this idea of, okay, I'm human, they're human. They're, they're going through the same changes because we work for the same company. How do we find that happy medium? How do we talk about product marketing? Uh, and we don't, you know, we, we don't overstep or overspell in a part of the world that we were not going to be able to have a teacher available. Whatever that conversation will be, understanding that you're all on the same boat of transformation as a company and come in from a human level perspective rather than a vertical or a technical versus non technical perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense because. Um, tech people and and um, normal humans are, are two completely different species. And, and by the way, when I say tech tech people are not normal, I mean that tech people are magical, right? Tech people yeah. can do magical things, wonderful yeah. things, but but normal people don't understand that. It it doesn't translate. So it's it's. I'm still magical. I'm not tech, but I'm still magical. Okay. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> we all have our own magic. We all have our own. And that's the reality. It's like, you're yeah. right. You're yeah. making magic here. So yeah. other people are making magic, magic. I'm making magic there. It is not a who is who. It is really we're all in the same we're place. Yeah, making exactly. changes, going through this journey, right. aligning to that goal. And so we're all working for the same idea. So that's when that empathy, encoding empathy in what we do and in our story really helps. 
Exactly, that. that's that's very true. And, 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 and that's uh, something that I think we need to be reminded of because the, um, the uh, experience inside of a lot of companies is a little bit more like us versus them that I was yeah. joking. I was, I was only joking about, but, but I mean, it's, it's, okay. it's, a good, it's a good joke because there's some truth to it. Like there's truth to it. People from the other sides, uh, from each side, they fear each other, right? They don't yeah. understand. I don't speak technology. I don't speak, you know, finance or business. And, yeah. and, it, and we have to find ways, methods to, to tie that together and storytelling is apparently the way to do that. No way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's the right. very, it's, so, you know, I have a, and one thing to just to close on this point, yeah. how how to become an empath, how to how to activate that today. Okay, Miri, that sounds very good in theory. How do I do that today? Uh, really is it's a simple, simple thing. When you when you have an audience, whatever that audience is, no longer call them what they are. No, no, no longer say the sales people or the marketing people or the tech people or the engineers. Call them humans, literally, in your brain. I mean, don't call them outside humans, that's weird. But in your mind, I'm going to go meet with a human. I'm not going to go meet with a salesperson. I'm not going to go meet with an engineer. That unlocks, I promise you, I mean, I've been doing this for over six years. That unlocks a new level of how you yeah. deliver, how you enter the space, and how you communicate in the space. Wow. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I love that. That's really, really good. So um, I want to talk about one more thing because, you yeah. know, the, all the rage uh, about AI yeah. and, and are the computers taking over and will yeah. they be writing and, and sharing and telling our stories in the future? You know, how, how, how long until, you know, we're obsolete. We don't need a Miri mm-hmm. anymore because nobody, nobody tells a story like an AI. Um, <laughs> so... The, the 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 cloud AI and and stories. How how is this yeah. kind of colliding? Um, where yeah. are we? Can you talk yeah, about you know, I, I wanted to ask you. I know I'm putting you on the spot, but that's okay. You put me on the spot. So, have you read the latest uh, workplace or work index that Microsoft just uh, just, just shared uh, yesterday? It just came out. Oh, yesterday, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so it actually is. It's fascinating. It's all about the new ways of working and how employees are now enabling. AI tools and how there's this kind of like, you know, we thought we were going to be super afraid of AI and be like, is it going to take over the job? No, it's actually an option in the end that it can enable a lot of the operationality of our jobs. So when you think about storytelling, when you think about AI and the capabilities, I have been obviously um, you know, exploring these spaces and teaching about these spaces uh, since, you know, we have open AI and we collaborated from a company perspective. But beyond that, I, I work with brands all over the world. Um, you know, yes and no in the takeover. Yes, there will be some takeover of some things, and those things are going to be highly operational. Can I give you, tell me a story in three seconds? It can. It's going to give you about 80% of good content if you prompt it well, but it, what it will never do is it won't have that sentient thing that is your lived experience as a human. How does that play in? Back to point one. When you're embarked in this journey of personal transformation, of digital transformation, because both are going congruent, um, no, the robot is not living that experience. It's going to only be informed by analytics. It's going to be able to turn data into information, but not information into insights. Insights is a very human thing. And so you get to inform it. You get to encode it. You get to encode that empathy in it so it can give you that output that you need. On top of that, you get to still live that experience. As an engineer, again, you know, I talk to so many, and, and I love when I ask the question, why are you doing this? Why are you here doing this very thing today? And I get this wide eye answer, so how fascinating it is for them to be in, live in this era of AI and how it has transformed them personally. That will never be a robot story. That is a personal human story, that transformation. And so there will be space for the minutia and the overall, you know, uh, high level storytelling, but the depth and humanity that makes the story really good, and the emotions that are there to the experiences of our journey to the cloud from a company perspective and an individual perspective and an engineer individual perspective, nobody, no robot will ever surpass that. So there is space for both, and we're going to get a lot more creative using the tools, allowing you know some of that writer's block. I'm playing with that a lot, and then allowing the creativity. We're going to have a lot more time to really think about empathetic content, inclusive content, 
uh, language content. And so how this lands in another part of the world, how my story resonates with an engineer in China or in Portugal. These are the kind of things that's going to unify more because we'll have more time to do that. So it's going to be, it could be a lot of fun, I think. Yeah, definitely. I I couldn't agree more. It's it's it is um, um, a wild ride right now with all that AI and and how it is kind of just it, it is at least impacting all the things that we're doing. There there's there's stuff happening, and I like how they kind of write up uh, you know half a story for you, or or they yeah. they begin the, the story for you, and you can then take over. Um, yeah. there, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, value in that. I I, I guess. All right. Oh, okay. So listen, um, we have come to an end at this oh point. Oh my gosh, that's it? Time flies. Yeah. I mean, I should have should... came, in, I should have came in on time so we can have more time. <laughs> I saw off the show, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was trying to connect. I had updates. What can I say? That is <laughs> all right. No, no worries. You you were on time actually. That's that. It, it's all good. So um, the the I want to I want to thank you very much for coming and uh, also let's. You know, call out the book. It's brand storytelling. It's that's your book, and, uh, yeah. and people should just get it and read it, and and get to uh, writing a story for their business, for their cloud journey, for their purpose of what they why why are they doing this, and then yeah. tell that story to, I guess everyone, right? Even the, the yeah. you know, even the, even have... the guy even the guy working in the cafeteria should be able to tell the story, right? Um, it's so important. They should. They should. <laughs> I wrote this book specifically for devs and engineers, because uh, that's how, uh, that's my space. I've been at Microsoft 10 years, and I know they want to tell the story, and I know we're being encouraged to tell the story. Um, and I mean, it's, I, I used to have these conversations with these engineers, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you just, you got to go tell the story. And so for me, that is part of that. It's, it's enabling people to not be, have these, you know, oh, this is not for me. I'm not a storyteller. No, we are. We're all storytellers. In fact, your work and the, what you produce, you know that's your story. You give so much more of, of that in the, in, the, in the production of what you do and the actual product and the, and the solutions. And so how to translate that solution is something that people will be just as excited about is the storytelling. My book is actually the, uh, the second edition is coming out in June. So don't buy it yet. <laughs> Wait for June. And this is why. Oh, I think it's already in pre -sale. I'm not sure. But it doesn't matter. Look, when you find it, uh, the second edition has a workbook where you actually can implement the theory and come out with a brand story. So if your company right now is going through a digital transformation, it's just getting started, wherever you are in the journey, and you're like, hey, I haven't taken time to do the story, you could the workbook, I promise you, I worked so hard on that because I wanted to make sure that people, people are like the first edition, like they love the book, Mary. And I'm like, okay, but how do I activate it? So this is how you activate it. So I'm proud of it. Okay. Cool. That's that's great. And 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 now I'm gonna have to buy the book all over again. Now you're gonna have to buy it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mary, for being on the cloud show today. It was lovely having you. Thanks for Thank having you. me. Nice to see you, Magnus. Be well. Bye bye. Bye.